When did you start believing that your writing could actually be turned into a movie? Well, um, I don't know if I've ever, I, I guess from the, from the first time I started writing, I, I, I had that belief that what I was writing could be a movie. I, th I think most writers, I think, carry that with them and, you know, as the kind of the, the force behind wanting to get this movie made is that it, I think this movie, I think my script is good enough to be a movie. Even my my first even my first screenplay, I I, I believed in it enough that, I, you know, I, I almost sold it, and so I think I think that has to be part of 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 your of your constitution as a writer that you believe that what you're going to write, you know, however you know you're, you're, the next three to four months, five months of your life that you're writing this, that it's it's, it's going to be worth making it as a as a film. Right, and so here you're writing in, in the basement, so to speak, or, or maybe truly, and you're working at this firm, most of the people there maybe at the beginning didn't know, and you're taking meetings and it's, it's fascinating. So just like you said earlier, I think it was the Robert McKee quote about, you know, writers kind of see things in two ways. Right. What's really happening to them and then split off. How is this a part of a story? Correct. It was almost as if you were living that in some sense. That's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, maybe I've never thought of it that way, but in a way, yeah, my, my, uh, my life was uh, somewhat schizophrenic, right? Right, yeah, but in in a, in a good I mean, way. It, yeah, in a, in a, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, schizophrenic in a good way. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Well, yeah. Don't ask my wife. Certain days, <laughs> she might have wanted me to commit it, but uh, she, uh, yeah, it, uh, it it is. It was. Um, I don't know how many other people have done it, but um, certainly, I like I said, I had a, I had a lot of people tell me you can't, you cannot do what you think you're doing. You know, you can't, you cannot be writing. And I was too old. I was thirty already. I, I had peak. Oh, I had people tell 30. me mm -hmm. <laughs> I was too old. That you, you know you started too old. Hmm. I, I I had people across you know sitting across the desk from wow. me. And, but but I mean how do you, you know that's like uh, how, how do you, how do you how do you address that you know how do you make that better? How am I going to change that? Right? I mean, it's that that criticism is just a, it's just an insult. It's just a criticism. It's not like saying you've got to you know spend more time on on your main character i mean somebody just says you're too old what's it what, you know that's, right but you get you, you get those kinds of things in life when and and i got to a point um and maybe because i was older and you know i did have maybe a limited time but i had people i i got less patient with people and uh when i would get uh, when I would talk to a producer who read my script and he gave me this answer, I, I would just say, what, the, the, what does that mean? I, I, I don't even know what you mean by that. I, I would get confronted. of. One guy said, you can't talk to people like that in Hollywood. I said, well, I am. You know? And I basically, and I also learned that a lot of producers needed me more than I needed them. I, I learned how to discern in a very short period of time whether the person I was sitting across the desk from could help me. How so? Um, just a gut? Just, just gut feeling. What were their credits? What, how, what, how did they address it? You know, what, you know, they would tell me, they would start telling me how great they were. All right. But I don't know how many movies he's really actually made. You know, this is, a, this is way before IMDb. Right where you could look on your phone while sure, talking. Sure, right. Mm -hmm. And so, Hollywood is filled with what? That's the great. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies now. Uh, it has uh, the player. Or no, uh, no, uh, Argo. Oh yes. So you want to come huh? to you want to come to Hollywood, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Love that movie. Act like a big shot, right? And not make a movie, right? Well, you'll fit right in. Sure. There are a lot of people like that. Right. And then I always say the Bill Nikita scene. What's fascinating is our our uh, foreign distributor was in. Uh, um, the uh, same office as uh, um, that they shot, and uh, <laughs> where uh, he sp he says something, and the and the producer goes, "Who are you?" I, I call that the Bill McKee scene. I would get that. Who are you again?
Oh. Um, but, um, you know, you just uh, you have to believe in what, what you're doing and you, you can't let people stand in your way. I got to a point where either you're going to help me or you're going to get out of my way. Okay. I actually said that, I, I said that to another, per, another producer. You're, listen, okay. And they would give you, they would give me the, uh, uh, the uh, they wanted to give me uh, the, the uh, a, uh, uh, what do I call, the uh, reality uh, talk. Oh. And I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. If you're giving me the, you know, this, like, look at my, you know, the, uh, at, at my life and uh, this, this, I'm way past that. I blew past that stop sign a long time ago. So save your wind. You know this this whole thing that I can't do it. I I I I, I you know that's way in my rearview mirror. So either you're going to help me or you're not. But don't give me this this spiel that I you know that all these you know these these stumbling blocks in my life that I can't be a writer. Well, you know what's fascinating is you said that. Uh, uh, Ray Liotta said, you know, hey, I have a chip on my shoulder, I was adopted, whatever. And and you identified that, you said, you have a slight chip. How does that help people in life? And how can it hurt someone? Well, I guess you can't, you can be too angry, but I, I guess I always had a certain amount of anger. I remember my brother Steve, uh, again, only Steve could, you know, defend me in this way. But a, a, a journalist wrote, was writing a story about me and called Steve and said, you know, is, uh, so, you know, did, was your brother uh, angry growing up? And my brother's answer was, well, wouldn't you be if your brother couldn't walk? And yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I, you know, we all have different, you know, we all have different uh, emotional makeup. Uh, it's, you can't be too angry. That way, you're going to alienate people uh, constantly. And and so I I wouldn't be confronted with someone until they were obviously not going to help me. Uh, and then I would say, well, wait a minute. You know, I I'm I'm doing I'm going to do this. You know, whether you think I can or not. Right. And, and there's what, Michael Crichton, uh, John Grisham, uh, David Balducci. I, I believe they were attorneys that uh, well, became writers. Well, Michael Crichton writers? was actually, I think, a no. doctor. Oh, he doctor. Okay, sorry. But, okay. Yeah, uh -huh. so you can do it. They, they, but as a, uh, it's interesting, as a novelist, it's a little different. You know, you can, you can write as a novel. And, but being a screenwriter, uh, and then meet people knowing that at that time, because I, then, I, then uh, after that, though, uh, I, I covered it by by having my LA cell phone, so that I thought I was in LA, so I didn't have to deal with that anymore. I didn't have to tell. I didn't have to explain that to people. Um, but um, you would get uh, you you would just get people who would see the fact that at my age, I didn't live in LA, and there's no way you can do this. And to be quite candid, I guess the odds were against me. Even 30? 30 was too old. Well. Um, that's what I was being told. Huh. I didn't believe it, but I was being told, yeah, that oh, I was, 30. I was, I, that I, I started too late, that nope, you can't do it. And writers started a lot younger. Well, I didn't, so.